Okay, so last time I said I would dedicate this uh, episode to doing a bit of Christian bashing. But I won't directly start doing that. I will get to that. And the reason is um, to destroy your faith and hope. Um, both of those. Now, I did mention before why. But in this one, let me sketch out in detail why uh, well, what, what's facing you and let's start with uh, where we kind of left off before it's uh, with solar radiation management so you remember global dimming and how I mentioned putting sulfates up there and stuff like that as a last ditch attempt I just mentioned it obliquely so um, I must mention one of those projects and it's called uh, Scopex. Um, I think it's about to start in March um, 2019. <clears throat> but it's the first experiment in solar radiation management. Um, it was funded by Bill Gates. Uh, it's going to be done by, not Yale this time, Harvard. It's evil twin. Uh, no government would touch it, which says a lot in itself. But really illegally almost um, they're going to go ahead and do it anyway they without ref I mean you don't get to this is one of really really important stuff and by now you should have realized that the really important stuff you never get a say in you will never ever they will never give you a say in things like GMO crops uh, they'll never have a proper referendum they had they had a proposition in California um, for whether to label GMO uh, foodstuffs and uh, you, they just corrupted the democratic process. Uh, Monster Insanito did just so they could uh, push through the agenda for GMO foods on the basis that uh, people don't know what's good for them, so you know we'll decide. And so you, so the really important things, you know, the eugenics, the population control experiments, which they've been doing, they they'll never ever put it, put those to the referendum. Uh, because they just consider them too important, and, and this is in that category of uh, you know last ditch attempts to mitigate climate change. Now, uh, what Scopex is is uh, stratospheric. What's it called? Stratospheric controlled perturbation experiment. I think that's what it is. But anyway, the 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 thing is, they're just going to get limestone put it up in the atmosphere in a controlled experiment to just see what it does. It's the first step in doing solar radiation management and uh, what I mentioned before, putting sulfates in the air to make dimming to compete with the warming. It's not a fix, uh, it's just really a band-aid um, while they want to get the CO2 down. Uh, well, I mean, that's how it's presented. So. Um, You've got to ask yourself, okay, what, what does this do? So the limestone is, uh, it stays up there, it's put up there with jets is the, is the idea. Um, hundreds and then thousands of tons of this stuff. Um, and then it stays up there for a little while, it falls out as acid rain. Now, they billing it as basically this consequentialist argument that well, the sulfates from all the pollution in the lower atmosphere is killing people in the millions every year. Maybe four million people die of uh, the pollution every year. So they don't often talk about that, but they are talking about it now when they need the funding for this experiment. And it's saying, well, what we can do is we can put uh, limestone and sulfates in the upper atmosphere, you know, very high, 20 kilometers or something like that, and then, yeah, people are going to die, um, but far fewer than from the pollution on the ground. So it's far more effective to put it up high. You need probably a small percentage of the amount of uh, phosphates and um, aerosols in the pollution in the lower atmosphere. So they're trying to get the same effect as the lower atmosphere aerosols by deliberately putting it in the upper atmosphere. Now this all makes sense if you're a psychopath. Uh, and it makes sense to psychopaths like Bill Gates and Melinda Gates, who's the psychopath behind the throne. 
Um, so now the question is, should they be allowed to do it? They're going to do it anyway. They're billionaires and people worship billionaires, so get over it. <laughs> you can't do a damn thing about it. The only thing you can do is to realize uh, or think ahead to the world that they're trying to make you live in. So if this did work, uh, you have to imagine, again, this consequentialist psychopathic world goes forward. You have to imagine a world where they seeding the upper atmosphere uh, is a political act. It has political ramifications. The first one of them is you, you have to decide where you're going to seed. The people you seed for are going to get preferential treatment. In other words, Americans. So in America, they will get preferential treatment. They will get rain and crops at the expense of somebody else. It's not, uh, it's a zero sum game. You're squeezing, essentially, uh, you're squeezing the atmosphere just to favor one section of the population geography over another geographic population. So it's it's obvious who's going to come off worst in this. And if you think of the IMF and the World Bank and how they exploited all the third world, well, you have to imagine a world where America is holding people to ransom, saying, you know, this is a huge operation, by the way, in terms of uh, logistics and putting this stuff up there. Uh, you don't get to say whether you get the acid rain or not as a, say, a third world country. And you can also expect, you know, these are psychopaths. So you can expect the State Department to say, well, you know, fall into line, uh, you know, Nigeria or Haiti or Venezuela, as, uh, you know, fall into line or we're not going to be seeding the cloud for you and you don't want that, do you? So it's more this mafioso stuff and it's been enabled by criminal psychopaths like Bill and Melinda Gates, who, yeah, hey, we love because they stole money from us. Get over it, people. Bill Gates is a crook. He made his fortune by stealing kudos and selling something to IBM. He didn't own kudos. He sold it to IBM before he owned it. He went to kudos uh, and bought it, not telling him that he had already sold it on to IBM. He's a criminal. Uh, and it, he's not a self-made man. He did it because his mother was on the same board. She, she was on the board of this charity where the executive in charge of IBM who made this thing happen also was a member of the board. So it's nepotism. So Bill Gates, criminal. It's, it's not even debatable. Uh, but he can go around and people, oh, look, he's got hope. He's got hope. It's so fake. His attitude of hope is so fake, it's unbelievable. Uh, he's just trying to stave off the pitchforks. Uh, so there's a long history of Carnegie, Mellon, Rockefeller, all these things, you know, Cecil Rhodes, all of these psychopaths, they did the same thing. They massive klepto kleptomaniacs. The kleptocrats took vast amount of wealth from us. And then in their later years, they, they tried to buy back their soul with the money they stole from us. And these people let them. They actually lorded over people like Bill Gates and Mellon and all, you know, Carnegie. They're criminal psychopaths. And here we got, you know, all these institutes named after them um, because it's our money they stole. So, yeah, no wonder Bill Gates is saying, you know, yeah, we should, you know, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are saying you should tax the billionaires. Um, they have nothing to lose. There's the money's in foundations, and they're using these foundations to do things that are not beyond the public mandate. So this, these Scopex is an experiment. Uh, it's an applied science experiment. So it's it's an applied science experiment is engineering. That's why it's called geoengineering. Now the Psychopaths that do these experiments, the scientists, they're getting well beyond science now. They're still pretending it's science, but an engineer will tell you that a science experiment like this is, well, for a start, engineering is all about trial and error. You try something and try it and try it again and try it again until it succeeds, and then you try and improve on it, and you do these incremental improvements. They're doing this with uh, basically a Fabergé egg, your Earth. So, they only get to experiment once. So, again, it's called stratospheric controlled perturbation experiment. They're going to perturb an atmosphere, which I've just told you can, you know, be perturbed to head off to one 
extreme or another and they're going to tickle it slowly, tickle the tail of the dragon to see which way it goes. Now it could tip and go catastrophically in one direction. Nobody actually knows, but they're going to do this because they can and uh, they're not subject to any kind of uh, democratic mandate. Yay! Billionaires! We love them, don't we, America? So, yeah, that's private enterprise and that's what private enterprise can do. Determine your fate and you're powerless to do anything about it. So, okay, so now I've sketched out what fu dystopian future could be living in a scheme where all of these things are managed. So, the rubric that this all goes under is solar radiation management. And this is really the topic that I want to talk about. So we really are at a juncture where extinction is inevitable, unavoidable and imminent. But there are still important choices to make. And those important choices are what kind of extinction you want to have. Now, there are two types of extinction. We can have a managed extinction or what I'm calling is a manumission extinction. So in other words, you can do solar radiation management, you can do climate management, you can go down this, we've had 8,000 years of management. So you can go with the management pathology and the psychopathy that we've, you know, we've had management, management, management of the entire planet. Um, it's since the biblical injunction to go forth and control the earth, you know, you know, the, the idea that man has dominion over the earth, therefore you can manage it. Well, clearly you can't. And brilliant now, geniuses, you can see why. This is what happens when you try and manage things. It turns to shit, and when you manage people, it turns to shit too. So you have to get rid of the managers. The managers are psychopaths. I'm sorry. You just have to come to terms with the fact that managers are psychopaths. We'll get back to that. But you can go down this route of management of extinction. Now, it'll be very bleak. And let me try and paint out what is going to happen if you do this. They will manage us all the way, like you can easily take examples in history, things like the fall of Germany. That was a managed fall. And it's bleak in so many ways. Um, I will come back to the Holocaust because in effect, they will have holocausts. There are holocausts brewing that I must tell you about. Some of them brought by the EU. I, I don't wish to be rude. I don't wish to interrupt you. I'm, I'm eavesdropping, and you're the first person I've heard speaking such sound uh, sense about such a <laughs> topic for about six months. Yeah, so can I, it? I, I didn't <laughs> come on board. Come on board. I'm, I'm making a YouTube video, so. If you, do you mind being in it? <laughs> so here's a turn of events. Uh, somebody was just <laughs> passing on the dock. I, I don't actually, I don't actually know him, but I asked him. Oh, God. Oh, so, so, come and sit down. Come and sit down. Oh, thank you so, so much. So anyway, uh, you'll have to introduce yourself to Wonderful. the camera. Wonderful. Oh, that's uh, your camera. Yes. Come and sit around about here, oh, okay. and then I think we're probably. We're probably both in frame. Okay, okay. well, anyway, you, uh, yeah. introduce yourself. I'm, I'm Lord Hugh for the camera. You're Lord Hugh for the camera. <laughs> and uh, I'm Andrew Rutherford. That's the reality. It is do you mind the... if that's on YouTube? No, I don't mind. Okay, okay. No, I don't mind at all. Was, um, I, I was just say what you just said on the dock. I was, dark because I was I, I eavesdropping your conversation. I thought you were addressing somebody inside, of course. <laughs> um, yeah. And such profound sound sense on such important subjects is... Very hard. Okay, okay, wait. This isn't a setup. No, I really, set up. I really don't. I really don't. It's know, really not. Know you from I don't know you from Adam. Right? You okay. don't. No, we've well, just met. Well, so yeah, uh, that's it. On. So I just yeah. didn't want to carry on eavesdropping and and be rude. I thought I'd better say hello and and just ask if you mind me listening to you. Well, then I was pitching this idea that we have yeah. a really a controlled extinction, a managed extinction, managed by the usual suspects, <laughs> or we can have a manumission uh, extinction is what I'm calling it, and that's basically we do it free. They you know, stop managing us and we manage ourselves. And my argument is that it 
my dream is that it would be like Catalonia in 1936, the anarchist revolution. It was a wonderful, wonderful time in anarchy. Okay, I don't know the history of Catalonia, but uh, it was, I'm missing it was that. in the Spanish Civil War. Mm. I must go over that in more detail to tell people about that because it, it was suppressed. It was what, what actually caught me in yeah. the beginning was when you were referring to the people as psychopaths, yeah. which is a hundred percent my view and always has been yeah. um, since I thought about it. That is, uh, we're managed by psychopaths. Our leaders are psychopaths. They have all the uh, clinical. Um, traits that would ha have them diagnosed as psychopaths. Yes. They are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So now there's, there's arguments with, and so I'm an anarchist, by the way. I'm um, a bit of one myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's going there, it's a trend. That'd be nice. <laughs> so there's a debate amongst anarchists whether you say, call these people psychopaths or uh, whether you call them sociopaths. Now, I call them psychopaths. And the reason is, if you look at Robert Hare, who is the world's expert on psychopathy, he wrote a psychopathy checklist. Mm, exactly. And they've, you know, they all tick off, tick check all off the boxes. The boxes yeah. so, so Including the no empathy, the um, yeah. murderous traits. The, the narcissistic uh, traits. Uh, yeah, I mean, just Ang lot. Angela Merkel threw, we're in Greece, Angela Merkel threw Greece under the bus for her political career. I mean, there are millions and millions of people starving, their families broken up, there are people that have to leave Greece. It's okay, because it's for her career. Now, that's a classic <laughs> narcissistic tray that, um, you know, it's all about number one, and then everything is justified on this consequentialist agenda. I'll give you another example. of So, Mal Madeleine Albright came on TV, and an interviewer asked her, you know, you did all this disaster in Iraq, uh, 500,000 children, half a million children were killed because of you. What do you think about that? And she said, well, I think in the end it was justified. Yeah, she's a lovely piece of work, isn't she? <laughs> I mean, that's a psychopath. There's, there's nobody in, yeah. nobody can come up with any result. I, I mean, it's just not possible to come out of a result where half a million children, innocent children, are killed for some end. There is no end that justifies that. So the fact that Madeleine Albright can say that means she's a psychopath, a clinical psychopath. Mm. But she will, she'll be retired with medals. So, mm. yeah. So by the rest of the psychopaths, <laughs> exactly. will provide the medals. <laughs> exactly. So that's the the reason I call them come straight out and call them psychopaths. Yeah. I, so Robert Hare, the inventor of the psychopathy checklist, he came out with this book called Snakes in Suits. And it mm. was all about how he went into the commercial environment, which he obviously is a bit ivory tower and closeted because he said, you know, there are lots of these guys. There are lots of them. You, in, in business, they're all over the place in Absolutely. management and executives. And this was a big revelation to him. Now, I've been in business my whole life. I don't know of you. A little bit. Well, so... You know, I'm like, dude, there's a word for psychopaths in business. They're called management and executives, <laughs> right? So, I mean, I was just appalled that he didn't know that there are all these varying degrees of psychopaths. So, yeah, I'm quite comfortable calling them psychopaths instead of sociopaths. So yeah. Now, yeah, me too. Yeah. And they're tra they're, they would need the traits of a psychopath to claw their way to the top, and that's why they're all at the top. Yes. You see, this is Jordan Peterson is uh, yeah, one of these psychopaths. And, uh, they, you know, if you ask him about the hierarchy, uh, then it's all justified. The hierarchy is all, it goes back to lobsters, so don't fight it. Uh, so, <laughs> I read that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I read the so, lobster one. But now when he's challenged on, you know, so you put your shoulders back and you fight your way up the hierarchy. So, so an interviewer <laughs> asked Jordan Peterson is, okay, What's the signature tray for helping people elevate themselves up the hierarchy? And he said, competence. But it's a complete lie. Because if you've been in business, you know that it's competence of backstabbing. It means you're an expert <laughs> at Machiavellianism. And that's how you go up the, the... So basically, it's simple. You need a good mush, nice handsome face, and a psychopathic personality. Mm. And whoosh, ah, they'll make you president 
yeah. whatever. <laughs> I think they've done that, haven't they? they oh, well, I think we've had a few. Put a psychopath's present. Oh, I, I think we've had a few it. of those, haven't we? <laughs> mm, yes. I, I mean, that is controversial, isn't it? I mean, a psychopathic president. Who could imagine yeah. such a thing? Yeah. Perhaps the last six American bands. I <laughs> <laughs> well, so, yeah, so then this video uh, was, was, do we let the psychopaths manage our extinction? Yes, exactly. Or uh, do we grab hold of our autonomy, take our freedom, demand it, and manage our own extinction, which is my preferred outcome. Definitely a preferred outcome, if you can't think of an even better one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this video has taken a surprising turn. Okay, so, so where do you want to take this next? Because I, I, I'm going to go through this. Well, you, thing, you, so. you take it on the path that you had mapped out, if that's all right with you. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, leave and sit over there for a minute and just be a casual observer, if that's all right. Okay, well, should we open a beer? Well, I we think could do, couldn't we? Let's do that. <laughs> okay, let, let's stop the video here. We'll open a beer, and I think this is going to be longer than a 20 minute. Okay. Damn. Okay, <laughs> here we go.